How's it going, Disciple Town friends? Welcome to another episode of Disciple Town, brought to you by Bolingbroke Church. And if you like any of our shows or any of our episodes, we want to ask you to like, share, and to subscribe to our Facebook and our YouTube channels. These help us get the word of Disciple Town to as many people as possible because we want to see more kids become Disciple Town citizens like you. Well, my name is Pastor David, and I will be your adventure guide today. So make sure that you have your adventure gear, and let's go on this Bible adventure. So all of this month, we've been talking about leadership. Let's remind ourselves what the definition of leadership is. Leadership is influencing others towards right. Not turning right, but the right way to live. And that is through Jesus. We want to introduce people to Jesus because Jesus helps us learn how to live the right way. Now today we're going to learn more about our element of leadership by learning another big idea. Now we can't wait for God to show us more amazing things, but before we begin, let's make sure that we have a word of prayer. Dear Jesus, I ask for your Holy Spirit to be with myself and all of our Disciple Town citizens as we read and learn about today's big idea about leadership. Thank you so much for sending your son Jesus to us, Lord. We ask for your Holy Spirit to give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to feel the message you have for us today. In Jesus' name we pray, and everyone said, Amen. All right, friends, without further ado, let's get ready to worship.
Show me the path of life. Lead me day and night. No matter where we go, I'm all in. You can tell me to wave my hands up in the air. Shout loud like no one else is there. You can tell me to start up high and twist it down. love to hear all of you sing and worship the Lord. So God has big plans for all of you. Every single one of our Disciple Town citizens has a plan that God wants to show you, a plan for your life. And he wants to make great leaders out of all of his Disciple Town citizens. So what has perked your interest about leadership so far? We've learned three big ideas this month. Let's take a look at the different ones and see which one you like the best. Our first week, we learned that Jesus set the example for leadership. We learn that Jesus is the perfect example of how to be a leader. Our second week we learn a good leader follows God. Now we don't want to lead anyone astray or the wrong direction. We want to lead them towards right. And the only way to do that is to follow God's leadership. The third week we learn a good leader serves others. Leadership is not about you having all the power and using it for yourself. Leadership is about how we can help serve others. Now we're gonna be learning about a brand new big idea this week. But before we do that, let's review something. Let's review the definition of leadership. Influencing people towards right. Very good, I know you guys know that one. And let's take a look at our memory verse. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker, who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. Very good. So what does that verse tell us? See, Paul was telling his friend Timothy to live a life that is dedicated towards God. To live in such a way that we represent God's love accurately to the world around us. That means I need to make the right choices to live my life because everyone is watching how I lead. And everyone is watching how you lead others too because all of you are leaders. And the best way that we can learn how to live is to spend time with God following Him, reading His Word, praying, and being among other Christians so we could learn how to lead the way God and Jesus would lead. So let's take a look at our big idea of the week. It's our last big idea that will end our series on leadership. And to help us learn, I have a friend here named Pastor Steve who's gonna help us learn all about our big idea. Let's give a round of applause for our friend, Pastor Steve. Ninety-six, ninety-seven, ninety-eight. Oh, hey kids, got just a couple more here, a couple more reps. Ninety-nine, one hundred. Woo! Oh, 
Wow, I just finished lifting this thousand pound barbell 100 times. I'm training for the upcoming Olympics. I got a gold medal the last time for weight lifting and I'm gonna hopefully win another one this year. So I've got to keep doing my training here. Just one second. Yeah, here we go. Okay, here we go. Feel the burn, right? Oh, thousand pounds, kids, that's so heavy. Do you think you could lift a thousand pounds? <laughs> well, you probably could lift this thousand pounds because check it out. Woo. This is actually a 1,000 pound barbell, pretend barbell, and it's full of air. See, it's not actually a thousand pounds. That's crazy. And you know, these medals, they are pretty cool. They say winner, but these aren't really what the gold medals look like at the Olympics. You may have seen the Olympics before. It's really, really awesome. It's when athletes from all over the world come to compete against and together with one another to win gold, silver, and bronze medals in all sorts of different competitions from track and field where they run super duper fast or they do the high jump or they run the hurdles, to gymnastics, to swimming, to cycling, to oh so many events. And then you have the Winter Olympics where you have things like ice hockey and figure skating and the bobsled or the luge or downhill ski races. It's amazing. And the athletes that participate in the Olympics are some of the highest trained athletes in the world. In order to be ready for those Olympic games, they have to train every single day for years on end. All of these athletes from all over the world right now are training for the next opportunity they have to be in the Olympic Games. They all want to pursue the great prize of trying to win a gold medal, something that can never be taken away from them. And this is a pursuit that has led them to train over and over and harder and harder. You know, there are many times I'm sure these athletes would love to just take it easy and maybe just go on a vacation or just watch some television. But in order for them to compete at the highest level, they have to make the hard choice to continue to say no to the easy way and to choose the hard way. I have to tell you that I am personally training for a new experimental Olympic event. And I was just getting ready to actually train for that. Would you like to kind of check out what I'm going to be doing? Yeah, okay, cool. Well, let me take my medals off because I don't want them getting in the way while I'm trying to practice. So, one second. Yes, we are here preparing for the next Olympic Games with a brand new event known as dice stacking. Competitors from across the world will be stacking dice one on top of the other to see who can stack six dice up the fastest. Now you might think, oh, well that's a very simple event. Anybody could do that and they can. That's why the Experimental Olympic Event Committee has recommended, even required, that all the competitors must now stack the dice on a popsicle stick like this one placed into the mouth and held in place while stacking the dice. Okay, there we go, there's one, there's two, there we go. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I am committed to be able to do this really, really well. So I've got to keep practicing this event if I want to be the best at it. So you wanna just check it out, watch me again, and maybe you need to get one of these for yourself when you get home today, and you could try this too. Okay, here we go. Okay, one, and two. So far, so good. Three. Oh, it's the best ever. Here's four. Uh oh, uh oh. That one's barely hanging on. Five. Huh. Oh. oh, man. Okay, so I only got to five that time. How am I ever going to get it up to six? Did you see that? The first three are pretty easy, but once you get to four, five, six, oh my, it starts getting really, really hard. So what I have to decide is, am I willing to put the hard work in that it's gonna take to be the fastest, the best at stacking six dice on a popsicle stick held in my mouth in the world? Am I gonna really want to make that hard choice? I'm not sure that I actually wanna spend that kind of time to be the world's best or one of the world's best at stacking these dice on a popsicle stick in my mouth. In order to make that kind of effort to be that good, I'm gonna have to practice for 
hours. I'm going to have to give up doing some other things that I really, really want to do, like going to the swimming pool or going skiing with my dad or playing golf. Or There's so many things I might not be able to do because I've got to make the choice to do hard work to be the best at something. Well, kids, our big idea today says a good leader makes hard choices. And it doesn't have to do with, you know, competing in some Olympic event, even an experimental one. Being a leader means doing good things in front of other people to influence them to make right choices. To be a good leader is to be someone that God uses to bring people from one place to another, always toward Him. Now that's the kind of leader that I want to be. That's what I want to spend my life doing. And to do that, the Bible teaches us that we've got to be willing to make some hard choices. We have to be willing to say no to ourself and no to some of the things that maybe we might like to do in order to be used by God as a good leader. Now, we've been talking all month about this element of leadership, and I hope by now you have decided that you're willing to make the hard choices and to do the hard work that it will take to be a godly leader. Are you? Well, right now, we're going to dig into the Bible one more time to learn one more big idea about this amazing element. I hope you're ready, because I sure am. Let's get them out now. Thank you, Pastor Steve. What a fun way to learn about our big idea. Our big idea is a good leader does hard things. That's right. Hard things are hard. But a good leader is willing to say, I will step up to the plate and do what no one else will. Now, there is a story in the Bible about a man named Jeremiah. And Jeremiah was around your age when God called him to be a leader. We're gonna learn all about him in this video. So make sure you sit back, relax, and let's learn about the prophet Jeremiah. Hi kids, today's story is Jeremiah Talks About God. Do you remember King Josiah? While he was king, God gave special messages to a boy named Jeremiah. During that time, God's people were going through very difficult times, and they were far away from their homes. That is why they were all very sad, worried, and even angry. But God gave all of them a very special message through Jeremiah. One day, God told Jeremiah, I knew you before you were born. I set you apart and appointed you as my prophet to the nations. But Jeremiah said, But Lord, I can't speak for you. I'm too young. Then God replied, Don't say I'm too young, for you must go wherever I send you and say whatever I tell you. And don't be afraid of the people, for I will be with you and will protect you. The Lord has spoken. From that day forward, God gave Jeremiah special messages, and sometimes he even gave Jeremiah images like a branch of a tree, a boiling pot, and a pot of clay. There was a very special message that God gave Jeremiah. God said, I will come and do for you all of the good things I have promised, and I will bring you home again. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. When you pray, I will listen And if you look for me with your whole hearts, you will find me. That was how Jeremiah spoke about God with everyone, even when some people did not want to listen. Jeremiah became a very special messenger of God since he was very young. And with this story, we learn that just like Jeremiah, we must talk about God with others and share his message. Wow, Jeremiah did really hard things. The people of God really didn't want to hear what they were doing wrong. But God asked Jeremiah, can you do the hard thing and let them know that they're falling away from me? You see, Jeremiah had a nickname and his nickname was the weeping prophet because everyone around him rejected him. He had no, not a lot of friends. He didn't have a lot of allies because he was willing to do the hard thing of letting Israel know that they were falling away from God's leadership. And so the Lord asked him to be a prophet, which means tell them about things that are going to happen. And guess what? All the things that God told them would happen, happened. 
the Babylonian Empire came in, destroyed their cities, took a lot of people as slaves, and the Israel people couldn't do anything about it because they weren't willing to listen to the leader that God rose up. If only they would have listened to Jeremiah. He was trying to influence them towards right. That's what leadership is, influencing people towards the right. And Jeremiah tried his best to lead people towards the right way of living. So our big idea says that leaders are willing to do the hard things. And Jeremiah was willing to not have any friends, to be put in a cistern, to be tortured, to be beaten, to be ridiculed, to be hated upon all the people around him. And that was the hard thing that God called him to do. But God had faith in Jeremiah. But Jeremiah knew that God would be with him throughout all the feats of leadership that he had to do. Now, what about you? Are you willing to do the hard thing? Are you willing to go not the easy route, but the hard route? You see, Jeremiah went the hard route because God called him to be a leader. You see, when we join God's family, we have access to what's called the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit helps us with all the things that we have to do that are very, very, very hard. But the point is, is that God says, no matter what hard thing is facing you, I will be with you. So we're not alone when we're doing hard things. God is going to be guiding us through His Holy Spirit. As long as we are willing to say, I'm going to do the hard thing. So my challenge for all of you today is to try to do the hard thing. And whenever you get afraid or lonely, don't worry because God is right there with you. All right, friends. Well, thank you so much for joining us here at Disciple Town this week. We can't wait to see you next month as we start a brand new series. So make sure you stay tuned and visit us online on our Facebook page, Disciple Town Kids, or our YouTube channel at Bolingbrook Church. And make sure you come and visit us every first and third weekend of each month here at 301 East Bowton Road in Bolingbrook, Illinois. We can't wait to have you here to worship and learn with us. We'll see you later, Disciple Town citizens. Until next time, 